Hi everyone, my name is Shelby Hartman. I'm Double Blind's co-founder and editor-in-chief, and today we're gonna talk about how you can buy shrooms online. So for the last few years at Double Blind, we've seen a growing number of brands popping up on Instagram selling shrooms. And some of these people are just sort of individual proprietors that have pictures of themselves holding or growing giant bags of mushrooms. And others are like what seem to be legit brands with brand identities and logos and colors and partnering with influencers and all the rest. And a few years ago, um, when I started to notice more and more of this, I was confused because as a journalist who's covering the psychedelic space, I knew that shrooms are still federally illegal, both in Canada and the United States. And at the time that we started to see more and more brands popping up selling shrooms on Instagram, there was a growing movement and continues to be a growing movement of jurisdictions that are decriminalizing psychedelics at the local level, essentially making them uh, the possession, gifting, and use of psychedelics a low law enforcement priority. But that doesn't mean that they're legal, and it definitely does not mean that it's legal to sell them on Instagram. So the first batch of brands that we really saw popping up online, and it's not just Instagram, it's also Facebook and probably Reddit, um, that were selling shrooms were primarily in Canada. And a lot of them were claiming to be in a quote, legal gray area. Again, just want to debunk that myth. Not quite true. So, so far what's happened in Canada is that a number of terminally ill patients have been granted exemptions by the Canadian federal government to use psilocybin for their end of life distress. You may or may not know that there's been a good amount of rigorous research out of institutions like Johns Hopkins and NYU that are looking at the promise of psilocybin, the psychoactive component in psychedelic mushrooms for anxiety and depression that comes along with a terminal illness. So the federal government in Canada has basically said, if you're a terminally ill patient, you can apply to the health department in Canada for an exemption to the federal prohibition of psilocybin, and we may or may not give it to you, depending on your circumstances. This does not mean that anyone can just make psilocybin gummies and sell them on Instagram, and that they're doing so in a legal gray area. More in a second, but first, I'd like to share with you a little bit about Double Blind. Hi, my name is Shelby Hartman. I'm Double Blind's co-founder and editor-in-chief. And for those of you who don't know, Double Blind began as a print magazine five years ago that I had the idea for when I was meditating. It hasn't been easy. We've been up against a lot, from censorship to all the challenges of running a media startup in the 21st century. We vowed to never have a paywall over our articles and to always offer scholarships for our educational offerings so people are not locked out from the information that they need to heal. This has all been made possible by the support of our members. Our membership comes with journeys to help people prepare for and process their psychedelic experiences. And we've teamed up with our favorite people in the psychedelic space to offer breath work, cannabis ceremonies, integration circles, and more. Plus the membership comes with a free subscription to our print magazine, which comes out twice a year. So if you feel called, I invite you to join us. So let's talk for a minute about what has been happening in the United States lately. As mentioned for, I don't know, at least like four or five years now, we've seen a lot of brands popping up in Canada selling psilocybin products online. And they're psilocybin gummies for microdosing. There's also websites where you can actually go and they have like a shop of whole psilocybin strains like Golden Teachers, Penis Envy, whatever, and you can just order them. Uh, but we hadn't really seen that happening in the United States until recently, at least as far as I'm aware. And then in the last year or so, started to see something similar happen in the United States. And we recently published a piece on the Double Blind website reported by journalist Mata Busby, who writes a lot for us, 
um, looking at a few of these brands. One of them is called Bliss Mushrooms. Um, they're based in Oakland. They sell psilocybin chocolate bars. Another is called Silhouette, um, also based in California. They have a kind of a suite of products for macrodosing and microdosing. It appears, at least to me, that you can just go on their websites and order shrooms. Um, but again, I just want to kind of re-emphasize that we're at a sort of tricky moment in psychedelic history where A, it's not entirely clear what the legality of this is, B, it's not entirely clear what the risk is for the brands that are doing it or for the people who decide to buy from these brands. These brands are all taking different approaches to try and sort of limit the risk of doing what they're doing. So some of them have Instagram accounts that are private, so you have to request to follow them. Others have forms that you have to fill out on their website, and they'll actually make you meet with someone on their team, and they'll talk to you a little bit about why it is that you want a trip and what your intention is before they sort of enroll you in a program and give you a password for a private store where you can order their products. So people are trying all kinds of things. And I think that the question is really, do the authorities care? And we're talking about local authorities in these people's cities and counties. We're talking about state authorities. And we're talking about the federal government. And right now, it's just the answer is we really don't know. Generally speaking, as far as we know, there haven't been tons of shroom brands online getting shut down by authorities. And as mentioned, at least as it pertains to local authorities in cities and counties where psychedelics have been decriminalized, it's a low law enforcement priority. So really, you know, it seems unlikely that in at least decriminalized jurisdictions that law enforcement is going to make it a priority to go after brands like this. The main exception we've seen to law enforcement going after people who are selling shrooms at this point are people who have been bold enough to actually open brick and mortars with signs outside that say something like, buy shrooms here. Risky move, guys. You may have heard on Double Blind about a place that opened last year in Portland, Oregon called Shroom House. And it was literally a brick and mortar that opened in the city's commercial district that had a sign outside with an Amanita muscaria mushroom on it, and they were just selling mushrooms. And, you know, we had one of our editors, Anna Wilcox, go by there and check it out, and there was a line around the corner, and people were waiting, and they were so excited to buy their shrooms. And lo and behold, not shocking, the place was shut down, the owner was arrested, and his bail was set at $1.5 million. Um, there have been a couple other cases of brick and mortars getting in trouble with authorities or getting shut down. In Canada, there was a place called Shroomies that was shut down in Toronto. But there were also Shroomies locations in Vancouver and Ottawa that seemingly have been unscathed to date. So, you know, it's just, it's unclear, again, like, who's going to get in trouble for what. But it seems, generally speaking, that you know, if people do something and they're very loud about it and they get media attention for it and people are lining up around the block for it, then yeah, the authorities are going to notice and they're going to do something. But otherwise, there's a lot of underground operations that are, you know, just chugging along, selling their gummies, selling their chocolates, and nobody seems to care yet. So basically, to date, it just seems like you know, if you're being really loud and proud about selling shrooms and you're getting a lot of attention, and in the case of Shroom House, they actually got media coverage about selling shrooms in Portland, then you might get shut down. Um, but otherwise, a lot of underground brands are kind of slipping under the radar right now. So I know I've been kind of humorous throughout this video, like, aha, don't be too loud and proud about selling your shroom gummies. But I actually want to take a moment to acknowledge and honor the fact that a lot of people who are choosing to sell shrooms right now are doing so because they genuinely believe in the therapeutic potential 
of psilocybin mushrooms and they don't feel like people who are suffering, people who want to explore their consciousness, people who just want to have a good time responsibly should have to wait for the legalization of shrooms. Right now, you may or may not know that psilocybin, the psychoactive ingredient in psychedelic mushrooms, synthetic psilocybin, um, is on the FDA fast track to be approved as a prescription therapy for major depressive disorder and treatment resistant depression. So it's likely that in the next three-ish years, although it's always hard to know with the FDA what the timeline is gonna be, that synthetic psilocybin will be legal in the context of therapy for people who have a diagnosis of depression. But there's a lot of unknowns about what that's going to look like. If you don't have a diagnosis of depression, will you be able to access this treatment through something called off-label, which means the FDA approves it for one thing, but you can take it for something else? Is it going to be covered by insurance? How much is it going to cost? And something we like to talk about at Double Blind, which is like, what if you don't want to do shrooms on a couch with two therapists and a blindfold on? What if you want to sit in a ceremony? What if you want to do shrooms by yourself in your house? What if you want to microdose? You know, um, in addition to the FDA, um, you may or may not have heard that Oregon became the first state to legalize facilitated psilocybin sessions. So they're just beginning to roll this out in the state of Oregon right now, but there was a lot of controversy because the first sort of approved site by the state to have these psilocybin experiences released the price for a psilocybin session. And I can't remember how much it was off the top of my head, but it was a lot of money. I wanna say it was like thousands of dollars, certainly more than a thousand dollars. And a lot of people were like, what the heck? I can't afford this. And so, um, you know, it's hard to know what people's intentions are. I'm not gonna say there isn't anyone who's getting into psychedelics right now or selling shrooms who doesn't just see it as the next big cash cow. People call it the shroom boom, just like the green rush, and they see a big opportunity to make money. But there are also a lot of people who we interview at Double Blind, who have written for Double Blind, who just want people to have access to this medicine. And so they're willing to, you know, open up a shop with a sign or sell shrooms online um, because they want, like I said, they want people to be able to access this medicine and they want people to be able to heal. Um, and they're willing to take the risk to do that. In cannabis, prior to legalization and even medicalization, we saw a lot of people doing something similar. They were saying there are cancer patients who are suffering from nausea as a result of chemotherapy. There are children who have seizures because of epilepsy. There are veterans who have nightmares and can't sleep because of PTSD. And it is wrong that they can't access a plant that could help them. And so those people, you know, they took risks and they opened brands and they opened storefronts before it was legal. And a lot of the folks who are doing this in shrooms see themselves the same way as pioneers of a forthcoming industry. If you're interested in learning more about this, you can read the full article at doubleblindmag.com.